all right so i'm using blender 3.3 and i'm gonna start off with uh, deleting everything first i'm gonna add a plane here for the ground and scale it up to something like that and go to the physics tab and give it a collision physics and that's all we need for this plane now what i'm gonna do next is i'm going to add another plane here and i'm gonna scale it up just like that and hit tab right click and subdivide it a few times I'm gonna select both of the planes and scale them up a little bit more. Now next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna hit tab on this plane, hit 3 for the face selection mode. I'm gonna select everything and click on mesh, split, faces by edges. Now if we go right there and set the pivot point to individual origins and then, get, and then scale them, you can scale every single face with its own origin and we need them to make the pillows so right click and subdivide this a few times hit shift r to repeat the subdivisions and this is gonna be fine for my experiment now next thing you wanna do is let's just bring this up from the ground not much gz i think we brought it down so i'm gonna bring it up a little bit and this is good now after that let's just add a solidify modifier for this right there and i'm gonna set the solidify to negative because uh, it's going down right now so bring this down to negative and it will be like that now this is good to go i'm gonna make it a little bit thinner just like that now what we want here is a random value for all of these pillows to control the pinning of the cloud simulation and that will be very easy to do in geometry nodes i'm gonna hit g for geometry nodes hit n and then select the mesh here and create a new geometry node system right there i'm going to rename it to simulation first what i'm going to do is let's just add a set material node here for the material and select the material then before doing anything else i'm going to go to the groups right there and create a new group and rename it to pinning now make sure to do this grouping thing before uh, outputting any attributes from there I'm going to add a delete geometry node here and right there in the selection we can add a random value node this is going to be set to boolean so basically we're using the id to delete the whole island not the points one by one so you can see these are uh, the islands and if i hit l these are selected just like that so you want to tell this to blender in geometry nodes to delete the islands based on the random value so in the id i'm going to add an island mesh island and connect the island index to the id now if you preview this what we actually got here is this random deleting thing with the islands if you were to um, remove the mesh island from there and this will just delete the points like randomly which we don't want right so connect the mesh island index to the id here let's get to go now we're gonna be animating this value for the whole animation okay so let's connect this back there and we want to use this deleted geometry as proximity to control the pinning of these objects now right there let's add a proximity node geometry proximity and in the distance i'm going to add a color ramp i think this will be good now we've selected the material if you want to preview the attributes from there you can go to the shader editor and select the material then i'm going to add an attribute here and type in any letter you want here so i'm going to type an x here and preview that now it's not doing anything because right now we didn't output this x from the geometry nodes so first i'm going to connect this color to this black dot right there and go to the modifiers tab and in the output attributes I'm gonna hit N here, go to group and click on this color and rename it to pinning group. This is gonna be our pinning, so just like that. In the pinning, uh, click there and select the pin group right there. And then I'm gonna get this again and connect it to the second dot there. And we're gonna type our X here to uh, output this X to our shader editor to preview the attributes. Now you can see it's doing something, but um, these edges are a little bit black here so i'm gonna play with the color ramp to make it work maybe you can set it to constant yeah that's good that's working the attributes are good to go i'm gonna add a reroute here well next thing we want to do is 
um, just a little bit of quad simulation and everything will be perfectly fine. But first I'm gonna animate this random value so I'm gonna bring up a timeline here and frame is gonna be 200. So now if you see here the areas that are white are not simulated and the black areas these are converting to the pillow type things. So we're gonna play with the probability here. So I'm gonna set this up like that and find a spot where most of them are white because you want to start the simulation where everything is static and it, uh, it uh, becomes the whole pillow thing then. Then right here I'm gonna insert a keyframe and in the frame 160 I'm gonna bring this down till everything is black to zero and insert the keyframe. And you can bring this back a little bit right there and save the file. Now this uh, animation is done. The next thing we want to do is the cloth simulation. So let's do that. Now if you want to check if your pinning group is working, you can add a wireframe modifier and right there you can select the pin group. So I saw that the pinning group is not working so let's apply the solidifier first then go to the vertex groups and remove this group from there. Then I'm gonna go right here and remove these attributes from there too. I'm gonna go to the edit mode, select everything and create a new vertex group and assign it. Now let's add a math node here to this color ramp and I'm gonna set this to multiply and multiply it by 2 and connect this right there. Then in the modifiers tab I'm gonna select my pin group there. Now let's add a wireframe modifier and in the vertex group I'm gonna select my vertex group. So um, sometimes the pinning may not work for you because First you need to create the vertex group, then you need to connect the multiply there, right there and then you need to select the group from here. Then you can check it by a wireframe modifier see if it's working. So for the cloud simulation, I can go to the simulation tab and right there let's give it a cloud. Now here are the quality steps. Um, right now let's keep it something like 10 and the vertex mass, let's make it 0.5 so maybe we can set the air viscosity to something high so the uh, pillows are not jumping around a lot it means that the air will be thick and the objects will fall down slow so I'm gonna set this to 10 or something give it some pressure and in the pressure let's set, the, set it to 15 then in the cache I'm gonna set the in frame to 200 and in the shape let's select the pin group and dynamic mesh if you want to. I'm gonna set the quality to 4 and turn on self collisions if you want. Now that's the whole cloth settings. Let's bake the data and see what we got. I'm gonna save the file and hit bake. Let's see what we got and play the um, timeline. Oh yeah, that looks very good. So we uh, baked 100 frames from there. So I'm gonna select the face there and hit shift G and select a, a similar normal. Now I selected all the faces up there Then I'm gonna hit ctrl plus to grow the selection and X to delete the faces. Then select everything with A and right click and subdivide. Now it's subdivided and I'm gonna go to the first frame. I removed the solidify modifier because I just applied it. Now you can add it back there first of all and make it a little bit thicker. Now the more the subdivisions the harder it's gonna be to bake. So let's select everything and just scale it up because I think the subdivisions are more than the scale of this thing. Now I'm gonna just separate one from there LP selection and turn off the cloth from the big one and let's play this now. If you have a, an object with a low scale and then you apply more subdivisions to that, the simulation is not gonna work. Like if you have more subdivisions, you need to give it a certain amount of scale. So that was the whole problem and I am sitting there for hours figuring out how to do that. Finally, let's just uh, go back to frame 1 and join our geometry back there. I'm gonna set a camera view real quick here. I added a camera, now I hit Control alt 0. The focal length, let's make it 85. Now hit G and double Z to zoom out. If to add an empty, select the camera and go to the depth of field. Select the empty right here. Bring down the f-stop to 0.5, 5 blades and that's good. 
Let's go to the render, set to cycles, GPU compute, motion blur with 0.25 I think. Go to performance and turn on persistent data and in the color management set it to high contrast. These are just some common settings I always use. Turn on the render region and here this is going to be an RGB without any alpha so RGB without any compression. Select your folder and then in this uh, world tab let's select an HDR. So I'm going to uh, add an HDRI here and this is going to be a very low strength so something like 0.2 to just cover up the black areas there. Then I'm going to add a light here. Let's add a spotlight. I'm going to bring it up there just like that. Scale it up a little bit. I'm going to set it to 3000. Give it some radius to make the shadows better. Now for lights to work, first let's go to the shading tab with S and remove this attribute from here for this material. Up and preview this. Now you can see the light is working. Go to the camera view and open another 3D report here and duplicate this light. I'm gonna set the power to 5000 this time. And yeah, not very great with lighting, but that's a simple one I did for my intro so that's it for the lighting let's um turn off the overlays there and uh, let's give it some materials so i have an add-on for this where you can get some free uh, materials and 3d models stuff like that it's called blender kit you can download it from free so you just search it on google and you'll get it and it works with internet so make sure you have an internet connection click this i button hit n and go to the blender kit right there now this one is blender kit and i'm gonna Click on materials and search for a fabric. So in the fabric, let's choose to download a material. I'm going to get something like, I think I used this one for the ground. Then I'm gonna download another one. Yeah, that is cool for the pillows. Now let the pillow material download. I'm gonna go to the geometry nodes and select the pillows and then in right here in the set material you can select the fabric material go to the shading tab and select the material fabric.001 you can really scale this thing up by setting the scale to something like 5 yeah this is good this works let's select the background actually and make it something something bright so I'm gonna add a mix RGB there and I'm going to set it to multiply factor to 1 and select a color for this some kind of blue color and this is very dark so I'm gonna click the V value and type in something like 10 here let's render a frame and see how that looks like okay that's good now the exact same file is gonna be available on my patreon so you can download it from there then I'm gonna Go to the render settings and set the maximum samples to 128. This is going to be enough for the render. You can bring this light up like that. And in front of it you can add a plane. Like uh, it will cover the light and uh, create some shadows. So for the shadows, create a new material. And right there add a mix shader. One can be something like a principal BSDF whatever you want and the second one is going to be transparent then for the factor you can add a color ramp color ramp and in the color ramp you can add a noise texture hit ctrl t for the noise texture and in the z axis type in hash frame divided by 1000 now give it some scale something like 15 some a detail of 3 or 4 and give it some distortion to preview the color ramp and see how that's looking bring down the scale maybe and that's good let's preview the whole thing now you want to click the go to the object properties and in the visibility turn the camera off so it's not visible in the camera and it still affects the shadows then i'm going to go to the uh, world tab and bring the strength down to 0.2 again now you can set the light strength to something like, uh, I don't know, 6000 here to have a better effect. Okay, let's set it to 50,000. Now we're getting somewhere. I think the scale of the objects is bigger, so the light needs to be a little bit um, more stronger, I think. Make the second one to 20,000. 
Now in this plane, we can change the color to something else too. Let's bring the V to something like up to 20. That's also looking great. Then you want to select the um, pillows and bake the data and see how that's looking. I don't know why the bake is so fast. Is the class simulation off for that or what? Oh, I think the simulation was off from here. Delete the bake and now bake again. Now I'm going to turn off the bake because uh, I already have uh, another file that I baked it. And let's see how that looks like. You know, just play it. Looking good, huh? That's actually pretty nice. Now you can just render a frame and see how that's looking. Looking pretty great, right? That is gonna be the end of the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.